Oh yeah, boy, you pour that coffee. Hey everyone, Charlie here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another episode of One Cup of Japan. If you're new to the show, very self-explanatory. I walk around and show you different parts of my region of Japan whilst having a cup uh, or a bottle of something. Today is jasmine tea and talking to you about topics that are on my mind uh, at the time. Now I do want to apologize ahead of time because maybe you can hear it in my voice. I'm a bit ill and chances are at one point or another I'm going to be all, you know, hacky and shite. So anyway, it's really nice out today. It's a beautiful day as you can see. Very springy. People are getting their gardens ready. Uh, over there you can see those yellow flowers. Those are nanohana, otherwise known as uh, rape blossom. And not in this area, but there are certainly some uh, cherry blossoms that are just starting to open up. So it's really, really starting to feel like uh, what is ultimately one of the most beautiful seasons uh, in Japan. Mine, mine still remains probably fall, but spring is a close second these days. Now I'm getting old and I can't deal with can't deal with the winters as well, I guess. Here is Haksan. I swear to God, like, there's all these shrines in Sabai, and like half of them are called Haksan, uh, Yellow Mountain, Yellow Mountain Jinja, Yellow Mountain Shrine, Yellow Mountain, what am I talking about? White Mountain Shrine. Uh, but, anyway, 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 I'm hoping now that things are nice, I'll finally get rid of this uh, bit of a lingering chest infection uh, because I really want to get back to running, especially now in this nice weather and hiking and stuff like that. Basically, two weeks ago, I um, ran a half marathon and it was good. Oh, well, well, it wasn't good. Um, I was sick. Wait, Joa. <laughs> no, everybody is wondering what the hell I'm doing. Uh, but I was I was sick before the marathon. I ran it, and then I got a lot worse. So I spent just about two weeks uh, sort of feeling exhausted every day, not being able to speak a lot of days, which was fun, as you might imagine. Which is why the first <coughs> excuse me uh, Veda video that went up yesterday uh, was the kind of video it was. But we're gonna do our best here. So. Um, There are a number of things I guess I want to talk about today, and today's episode maybe is going to be a little bit heavier than I would like it to be. I would like to be able to talk about some really exciting things, but I think, honestly, like a lot of time, when you have things on your mind, things that stick around aren't always the things that are like, oh man, this is good news, this is awesome, but, uh, so yesterday was the, the YouTube, uh, Hanami. Is this thing on? Yes? Okay. Uh, was the was the, the big Hanami in Tokyo. And I guess it was really successful. So that's good news for everybody who who took part in it and the organizers and everything. Um, but I was asked on Twitter, you know, if I was there. And my response was no, it's not it's not really my scene. And that's something I want to talk about today because some of my friends who are part of the J vlogging sphere have asked me about it and even those who haven't who also didn't end up taking part in the Hanami this year have made comments about sort of why and I think ultimately I don't know a lot of the people in my circle and outside of my circle um, I don't know feel that this community is kind of a weird one to be part of. And I can't really speak to other people's reasons or other people's feelings. But as for me, uh, well, I, want about, I want to talk about like maybe the positive parts. The positive things that have come from uh, starting to make videos in Japan and sort of being labeled de facto as a J vlogger and sort of becoming part of that community and of course the, the first thing is is all of you 
everybody who's interested in Japan or was interested in Japan and through that became interested in my my uh, my videos about Japan and then all my other videos too which is you know that's been really great that's the best part and you know I talked about before the friends that I've made through this um, and I feel like maybe I end up saying the same thing the same names too many times when I talk about this so I don't really want to dive in oh man can run 13 miles can't walk for 10 minutes Jesus it's killing me uh, but um, you know and I don't want to bore you by by giving you the same names and all that stuff over and over again, but there are there are people within the community um, who will go out of their way to make you feel welcome, to make you feel like yeah, you you are part of a community, no matter if you've met somebody once or you haven't met them at all. But there's just that there's just that connection, right? And to give you an example, a uh, month ago, a little over a month ago, a month and a half ago, right, right after I came back from <coughs> like that three year, four month break from YouTube, second three or four month break from YouTube, my, my microphone broke. My external microphone broke, which is why like my in-room vloggy video sounded like a potato for a while. <sighs> sounded like a potato. I don't know why I adopt that expression. I hate that expression. Blah 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 like a potato. Potatoes are delicious and wonderful. They played an important role in human civilization. But uh the microphone broke. And I'm not gonna name the other J vlogger or other member of this community uh for just because I don't want people expecting the same thing from him, but he saw me posting about this on Twitter said hey man give me your address and within a week I had a new external microphone in my apartment that I could use to make videos right and <coughs> it's 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 the type of generosity that is not um foreign to this community I think uh, you know I mean don't get me wrong I've never I don't receive uh, Cameras or microphones and things like that as a rule. Uh, as a rule, but other times, you know, when when I've had projects I wanted to promote, like writing projects or videos that I really want to make sure to get out there, uh, people have said, "Hey, man, if you got something you want to put out there, big people who are bigger than me, or people with more connections with me, um, people like." Uh, uh, former Kanto Kitsune, who now uh, is doing a really great uh, photojournalism project called Frame of Travel, you know, he always he always really try it, and unfortunately, I'm not the same kind of person, and so, you know, I didn't I didn't necessarily respond in the, in, in the way I should have, and and had his back the way I should have, and things like that. But uh, that is all this to say that you will find extreme generosity and kindness and indeed a sense of community within this community but but and this is the thing that really that really sort of ended up driving me away from from wanting even just wanting to go to the bigger community event was that there is this sense of factionalism you know, and and I know if you're part of, oh, the park's so busy today. I got some stalls open. Sweet. And I know if you're part of the community j as a as a viewer, as a as a fan or a subscriber or whatever to to anybody who who makes videos about Japan. Chances are you've sort of stumbled across those videos talking about that factionalism, and even when it's not like some of the big issues that keep coming up over and over again and I don't want to get too specific about it but I think you know what I mean if you've been around for a while but there's also these little individual dramas that ordinarily right if they're just between people 
you would deal with them between people, right? You would have a, you'd have a phone conversation. You would, uh, yeah, you'd, you'd have a conversation. You'd sit down, or you would decide privately that you don't want to have connections with somebody anymore. But what ends up happening, because there is YouTube involved in this and drama, drama makes for views. Oh, there, here is Nishima Park. Tsuji Matsuri is coming up next month. All of this, by the way, next week will be covered in Sakura. I'll bring you guys back here next week, probably. And then a month after that will be completely covered in bloomed Tsutsuji. Did I forget the name of her? Those azaleas? I don't know. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not really all that knowledgeable about, about flowers and such. But um, as you can see too, along the road, we've got a uh, bunch of little shops set up. We've got the cotton candy. Ah, oh, see what I'm saying. Cotton candy set up, uh, yakitori is over there, uh, coffee, lots of lots and lots of stuff over there, which I'll probably stop by after I get my bike, which is the point of my walking this way today. But the factionalism, factionalism is one thing, and that's something you're always going to have in every community. You can call it cliques, you can call it factions, you can call it whatever you want to call it. But I mean, that's that's the way of it, right? And you can deal with that. But what I can't abide, what I can't sort of uh, put up with is what is effectively this very uh, juvenile way of dealing with problems, uh, interpersonal problems that end up becoming like these Twitter beefs and stuff like that and and maybe you could make the argument that well that's just the way of things these days because of Twitter and because of YouTube and stuff like that and maybe that's true and maybe that's a sign that I'm 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 old-fashioned or whatever the case is but I just so long story short, that's uh, it's just not something I want to be that big of a part of. So I hope that answers that question for those of you who have, who have asked it, either privately or more openly on Twitter and stuff like that. I wish, <coughs> excuse me, I wish everyone well who wants to be uh, an active part of the community. I I will continue to respond to people who want to meet up to make a video and things like that. But as far as sort of too actively putting myself out there and too actively opening myself up to what are effectively, uh, I don't know, drama and things like that, I'm, I'm uninterested. I'm uninterested. So please take that for all you will. Like I said, no ill will towards anybody. It just is what it is. So, so see, these are cherry blossoms here. Let's see the buds. Hello, crow. See the buds here? Now the, the forecast, the Sakura forecast says these should open up <coughs> Excuse me. Um, by the 10th. They'll be at their height on the 10th, which is my little brother's birthday. And it's really going to be beautiful. I can't wait. Uh, I'm sure it will do everybody some good after this weird back and forth of winter and spring that has been the past couple weeks to uh, two months. But yeah. And I suppose sort of related to what I just talked about with, with uh, the, the greater vlogger community, Japan vlogger community. Um, and maybe it is just a sign of my getting older and not feeling like I have, uh, not feeling like I have the time to waste on shit, on bullshit. Um, I don't know, I've been thinking about recently too about this idea of whether or not it's okay to be selective and choosy in your friendships. <coughs> um, now, of course, if you have a romantic relationship, right, or it's a romantic situation, I don't think anybody would be like, okay, well, if you feel like that uh, your partner is not healthy for you or you're not happy or whatever, right, then the natural course of action, the best course of action for both parties is probably for you to, to exit the situation, right? And the thing is that I consider to consider myself to be have always considered myself to be a person of kind of integrity um, and so when I say to somebody you know I think of you like like a brother you're my brother you know I'll always be there for you whatever or you know same goes for, for a female friend 
and then suddenly that changes and those words seem empty and I find myself thinking about that a lot recently like is it okay for me to want to have friendships that that make me better or push me to be better or people who on the flip side make me want to make them want to be better you know if that makes sense and for the longest time when I was growing up my parents always said to me you know things like uh, why don't you why don't you make some friends who who want something from life or why don't you make some friends who who want to do something who have some passion or who are passionate about about you you know and it's true a lot of the friends I've made uh, not here, especially not here, but a lot of the friends I made almost exclusively before coming here <coughs> were people that, you know, good people, good people, but ultimately their goals were not in line with my goals or our ambitions were just different or we were just different people and ultimately the friendship, there was nothing that came from it, you know? And I'm starting to be more honest with myself that I have made a couple friends here who I think the problem is that they're too much like the person I'm trying not to be which is uh, and if you've been around here for a while this may not surprise you but I like to talk about things that I'm gonna do a lot and then when it comes down to doing that hard work maybe not following through on them now this year has seen a, a marked de departure from that kind of mentality and that kind of way of living and I'm happy to say that that's the case. But part of that has been more actively looking to surround myself with people who, who um, you know, have a, have a passion beyond their, beyond whatever the job is that they have to do to put food on the table. You know, who talk about that passion, who throw themselves sometimes uh, foolheartedly in, into their passion, you know what I mean? And I don't know, talking about it, like I don't think it's, it's bad to want to have the best people the, around you, you know, the best people that you can. And I don't mean best people in like an objective sense, I mean subjectively, however that means for you, what that means for you to live a happy, successful, again, su successful being subjective life. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I do worry about sort of looking at people as, uh, you know, based simply on like some kind of, uh, what am I trying to say? Like some kind of, uh, debit and credit system, you know, where like, okay, well this person, this person's very motivated in their, in their personal life, they, they want to get things done, so that's a, that's a green, right? That's a green on the old ledger. But then they do such and such, so then I give them a red, and then if the red is more than the green, then, then do I not want to be their friend? And so that's kind of the moral conundrum I find myself dealing with, is that, you know, I don't think that I have another chance at life after this. I'm not, I'm not religious. I, despite how romantic I find the idea of dualism, I think, I think probably when I die, I'm just going to be dead. I don't, I don't know necessarily or think necessarily that I have a soul that's going to live on after me. Oh, this is a beautiful house. Jeez. Looks like a shrine. And, uh, you know, and so it all stems from, ultimately probably from the feeling that, that I'm running out of time uh, in the years where I have the energy and the drive to do things and I want to I wanna give myself every advantage I can to, to sort of push forward in those things. So, uh, you know, asking for a friend, hashtag. <laughs> so I, I, would just, I would just love to hear some feedback on that because I don't, I don't want to treat people like there's some... Like, like, like their, their currency, you know what I mean? And that's effectively, in a way, what I'm talking about, I think. So, yeah, anyhow, that's where I'm at, man. That's where I'm at. That is where I'm at. 
but I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, I drank at one of these places in Kanazawa and got into a lot of trouble. Konnichiwa! A lot of trouble. Uh, one of those places over there. A, a lot of trouble. Not like we got the cops called on me, but I I told this story before, but we're gonna go down it because I'm not ready to end the video yet because I have more tea. So basically, I went to Kanazawa a couple weeks ago. I think I did a one kappa there, I don't really remember. I, I meant to do a one kappa a couple weeks ago. What am I talking about? Months ago. Months and months ago. And, uh, you know, I wanted to explore. I wanted to explore and I wanted to go out. And actually, I had planned to just have like a quiet night in writing. That was originally my intent, was like this sort of, uh, sorry, I keep thinking that maybe my camera's off, but it's because the light's on it, so I can't see the indicator light. Or this, the sunlight shining on it, so I can't see the indicator light. This is a cool little narrow passage right here. And, um, yeah, so I had planned to go to to Kanazawa and have this very, like, thorough sort of getaway. And just right for the weekend by myself. Not worry too much about anything, you know? And then sure enough, I end up in an izakaya and ordering hot sake because it was the deep of winter. And there's other foreign guy there and they end up eventually striking up a conversation, both of us revealing that we weren't sure if either of us was the douchey gaijin who wouldn't talk to other foreigners when they're out and about trying to mingle. Uh, it didn't turn out to be the case. And then these three very curious women come into the bar and start drinking with us and they're buying us drinks and whatever. And So that goes on for a while. And long story short, at some point, we end up at another bar, then end up at a... Ah, uh, can you hear that? Country road. Must be noon. Uh, at the top of Nishiyama Park, which you've seen before, some older videos, at 6 a.m. noon and 6 p.m. they play Ghibli themes from like this bell system that's atop Nishiyama Mountain, which you can see beyond these houses over here. And, uh, anyway, so that story ended with us sort of, uh, very narrowly being arrested. Ah, not narrowly being arrested, narrowly avoiding being arrested because they didn't think we had the money to pay, uh, at the snack bar. So, one more reason to dislike snack bars because they are bad decisions. Almost always. And never sober decisions, uh, in my experience. <laughs> in my experience. <laughs> Alright, which way do you want to go? Sure, let's go this way. So I eventually want to end up back at the train station because what happened is I parked my bike there the day after the half marathon and then I couldn't breathe for two weeks so it's left there and I wonder if they sort of, if the cops investigate and then after a bike's there for two weeks they sort of take it and impound it or something. Really hoping that's not the case because that would suck. But <coughs> so as we're sort of nearing the end of our cuppa here, it's a really strange thing about Fukui is that I talked about this before to some extent, but notice here that this building is old, of course. Maybe what? 70s, 60s, probably I would imagine. Concrete, right? And the thing about it is is that. Um, it looks aged, right? And so you always hear people talk about it, I talk about it certainly, how Japan has this weird aged look to it. Not weird, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely how it's aged and in some ways has some very modern architecture. But it always just astounds me that Fukui has a very aged sort of industrial look. More like post-apocalyptic than, than like, uh, mm, a reverence for the past kind of thing, you know? But, speaking of the past, uh, as I was saying, as we're coming to the end here, it is Sakura season, right? Just about. In some places it is already, right? Osaka, I know for somebody who was telling me, maybe it was Nippon Culture Quest was saying 
that uh, there's already cherry blossoms open up around there. But anyway, the point is, is that despite <coughs> the the things I talked about, I don't have any bad or negative things to say or negative feelings, I guess, if that makes sense. I think I'm just now sort of discovering something that maybe I've begun buying very much into sort of the Japanese concept of this week and this month in particular being uh, being time for something new and a rebirth and stuff like that. And so I think maybe now that I'm really sort of thinking about it, that might be why in addition to the fact that I'm just an old shit now, uh, why, why these things might be on my mind, you know? And I think it's good. I think, I think, hmm. I think it's something maybe, uh, at least coming from my culture and my upbringing where there's not all that much time for introspection. Of course, we think about introspection at the new year, in American culture, but at least in my experience, there's not like a, a day in spring where people are like, hey man, uh, things are going to begin again, it's the new school year, you know, kids are, kids are entering their first grade, they're getting their first backpack, others are starting college, some are starting their first jobs, all these other things, right? So this idea of first chances, new chances, second chances, blah 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 chances and of course people are doing what they can to, to put themselves, um, get themselves started on the right foot so maybe that's all it is ultimately. Or maybe I am just doomed to become an old curmudgeon. <laughs> also, also likely. Now this is beautiful. I love, love, love these the sort of uh, old stained wood and you can see some of the stain is just sort of completely burned out of it, baked out of it almost by the sun. And you can see, yeah, just behind the wood in between the two wooden layers, the inside and the outside, there's sort of like that stucco. Is it called stucco? Ah, oh, shit, I forget what it's called, but basically it's the, the, the mud, the mud plaster, right? The mud plaster. <sighs> Typical of these old traditional houses. Beautiful. Oh, train's coming. Good timing. If you're into trains anyway, it's good timing. Which I am into trains. Hashtag believe it. Oh, it's one of the old ones. They've been uh, updating all the trains here on this local Fukutetsu line recently, so you don't see those ones too much anymore. Now they're like futuristic, like fluorescently colored uh, trams. Really beautiful. Huge, huge windows, get a really great view on the way to the city or to Takefu. Uh, but anyway, as we're approaching the more rambly, less coherent part of the day, which means I have covered things I want to say and I'm probably stalling a little bit for time so I get to the <coughs> end of this cuppa. Uh, let's cross the street to be safe. To show off a little shop that's going to make an appearance in the video sometime sooner or later over here called Madaka. And if you're into kind of strange things, this place is pretty well known for uh, bear and boar meat uh, don and yakiniku teishoku if you're into that kind of thing. So, anyway, guys, let's get to my bike over here. Here's Nishisabai Station. It's a little station, not a very old station, but anyway. Man, that girl just gave me like the most powerful the fuck look ever. Uh, let's see if my bike's still here. Bike, 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 bike. Yes, there it is. Safe. All right, guys. Thanks always for watching. Let's finish our cuppa. Thanks always for watching. Please like and share this video if you didn't fact like it. And I'll see you all very soon indeed. <coughs> Death. Cheers. <laughs>